Hey everyone, in this episode we're going to go over all the aspects of the HiTech HFP30 Servo Programmer. This episode is in fact sponsored by HiTech Multiplex USA. They provided the programmer itself and two awesome servos to show off. First is the B-Series 9381 Bad Boy Brushless Servo. Second is a D-Series, a D951 Servo. And this way I can show the different programming aspects of both of those lines of HiTech servos. Also, both of these servos are going in a new plane I'm building, a 92-inch Gilmore Redline with Dell Williams Model 44 from Black Horse Model. So check out this link that popped up for that series of build videos. And I also have other servo programming videos, so check out this link for a playlist of those videos using the HiTech HFP25, the DPC-10, the HFP-30 like this video, and a new video coming soon using the new DPC-11. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and zoom in and check out this programmer. We're going to start off in the servo test mode screen. The first thing I want to show you is at the bottom. If you have a receiver plugged into this, it's going to give you the pulse width of that channel. And you can see I have it hooked up to my throttle channel and I'm moving my throttle stick and you can really get a good measure of the pulse width. And also it has the frame rate and you see after that dash, it was 17, 15 and 12. I'm changing the frame rate in my receiver and in real time that's showing up. So if you're ever curious what your frame rate is, or what pulse width your radio is sending, this is a good tool for that. Let's go into the setting. Uh, first setting screen is the gyro mode. If you're playing with a gyro servo that has different pulse widths, um, you would go in the gyro mode. But pulse underscore W, this is where you're setting the standard min, mid, and max pulse widths. What you saw was what this is from the factory, but I usually change these to minimum 900 mid 1500 like it was, and then max 2100. Uh, Futaba servos are programmed at 920, 1520, and 2120. So pulse would be the frame rate from the HFP30 in test mode if you weren't using a radio. So you can set a pulse, uh, a frame rate. You can set the test, how, fast your tests run, how many times your test runs by default. You can change the LCD contrast, very simple. And then finally, an option to reset everything to default settings. All right, so that is the settings mode, and let's go into manual. And manual is very straightforward. You use the pulse dial in the upper right-hand corner to dial the pulse, and I have this hooked up to a 9381 brushless servo just to show you what the servo is doing when you use the manual mode, and we'll do this again really quick. Very simple. If you want to dial in a pulse width, you can see your servo react in real time. All right, next we'll go to auto ESS. So there's three different types of tests in this setting. There's the extreme, the sweep, and the step. So we'll start with extreme. And when you go into extreme, it starts with a pause in the lower right-hand corner, see that square. And so we'll use the dial to change it to two seconds. And we hit it again and it changes to that play icon in the bottom right-hand corner. So Every two seconds, it's moving the servo from min to mid to max. And these are based on the pulse width values that you set up in the setting. Now we can change this seconds to one to make this go a little bit faster. So we'll play it again and you'll just see every one second, it's moving between those three endpoints, mid, min, and max. So let's go down the sweep. Sweep is gonna do a smooth continuous sweep for the period of the speed. So right now it's 24 seconds a cycle. So it's gonna take 24 seconds to move all the way from min to max. And you can sp speed that up by changing that, for example, to 12 seconds. And so this is just a nice smooth sweeping motion between the set min and max pulse widths. Finally is the auto step, and this is where it's going to sweep through from min to max based on the P step. So it was at one, so we'll change this to 10 because if you have it at one, it's barely gonna move, it's gonna take forever. But now we hit play, and it's moving the servo in 10 microsecond steps. And you can see the arm is just barely moving. 
and at any time you can change that and we'll move it up to 20 and you can see that now it's moving it by 20 microseconds every step to go through. So this is more of a, sm uh, a smoother controlled sweeping uh, if you want to go by certain steps. So we'll move this up to 38 and you can see, you can really see how much this, and there it hit the endpoint and now it's coming on, coming back. So that's auto step. And again, I always like to go into extreme. I use extreme a lot because I'll just play it and get it to 1500 and stop it. So I know that's right at 1500 when I can do something else. So let's go into the DB, uh, dead band or jitter. This is where it's using that jitter value and moving the servo left and right based on that. So if it's 0.25 microseconds, it's moving it actually uh, a half of a microsecond. So what I do here is I turn this up and you can see the arm moving back and forth and then you can slowly dial it down to see about where your servo stops moving. And that's generally your dead band. So normally you can set this with a high tech servo, but if you're not using us, if, you, if you're testing another brand servo, you can kind of dial back this jitter to find uh, the jitter value of whatever servo you're using. All right, so that was the testing mode. Let's go over to the programming mode. So now I have it hooked up to that 9381. That's a brushless servo. So we choose B. And what you will see here is negative 88, 2048, and 88. That's the endpoints and the midpoint. Here is counterclockwise or clockwise. You can change the rotation. This is where you would change your dead band. It's low. And if you want to increase your dead band, you can turn it up here. You can slow down your servos with speed. With failsafe, you can have an option to, if it loses signal, to go to a certain spot within the servo. Here you can dial up your soft start and then finally factory reset. So let's go back into this and let's make some changes. We're going to program the endpoints. So first, it wants you to get that pulse dial to center. And I have that back servo hooked up now to show you what the sync does. So when I hit enter for neutral, you notice that back servo moved to what its neutral is. And the goal here is for you to visually kind of set it to match the servo that's in the sync port. So let's just pick a neutral point there. We'll hit enter. And now let's pick left. So as soon as we pick left, the back servo is going to move to where it thinks left is. Now here's where the brushless servo program is weird. It's telling you to move the pulse dial all the way to the left, but then you have to turn it to the right to get it to keep moving more left. So we're pretending here, but we're using our eyes to match it to that back servo to kind of simulate what we would be using that sync port for. So we found this, we hit enter. Now let's go set the right. So as soon as we choose right and hit enter, the back servo is gonna go to where its right is. And because this is a brushless servo, it wants us to move that pulse dial all the way to the right. Now we're gonna dial to the left to keep moving it right to match what that other servo is. Now you could be matching it to a certain angle of deflection. In this example, I'm showing you with the sync port, what, how the sync port operates and how you can do this visually. Normally you would do that with uh, services hooked up. So now we can see the new neutral and endpoints setting there. So let's move back into test mode and we can go in the manual and we can see that in test mode, the sync and the servo port both read the same pulse width. So you can manually see what you just programmed and that's what I'm showing right here. Uh, so we're good to go. And that's how you program a brushless servo. Now, one of the most important things about programming servos is to be able to reset it to factory default. So that's what we're gonna do next. So we'll go down to page two and go to factory default set and you jog it left, jog it right, and then hit enter. And this resets that front 9381 back to factory defaults. And we see negative 88, 2048, and 88, and we're back to factory defaults. All right, so now we're gonna switch up. I'm gonna show you the differences with the D series. So now I have that D951 hooked up and we're going and we chose D and we can see a little bit different EPA values. And instead of uh, plus and minus, they look like they're um, all relative. So it goes from 3381 to 8,000 to 13. 
So we have a lot of the same values here. Uh, counterclockwise, uh, deadband, speed, ID. This is a D servo setting. You can set different IDs if you would like. Fail safe again. Soft start, overload protection. You can set uh, if the servo is binding, you can set it to decrease power. And then smart sense. Smart sense is a feature that allows the D series servo to kind of change parameters based on what's happening to make everything a little bit more uh, easier and more better performing for the servo. So we're going to program this. We don't have the front one uh, hooked up to the sync port, but it's basically the same thing. We're just working with uh, different types of numbers. So we just set a, a center point and for left, uh, we'll choose left. And this is more as you would examine, as you would uh, expect. Turn the pulse to the left to where you want it. We'll just do it by eye. We'll make it look like 90 degrees. Let's set right. We'll turn it all the way to the right and we'll just by eye you know, make it look like 90 degrees, just to make an example. And so now we see the new numbers there in the EPA settings. We'll go back to manual mode and we can do an extreme test here just to kind of show you those new endpoints that we were using. Hit play, boom, and those are the endpoints that we set. And I know that center point, I did it on purpose off center just to kind of show you. But we have those set and we're looking good. So just to reiterate, one of the most important things is to know how to reset your servos uh, to factory default. So we'll go back into programming and for the D series, it's exactly the same. You go down to page two, factory default set, move the wheel to the left, move it to the right, hit enter and boom, your D series servo is now back to factory. So that's all this is. Thanks for watching. This is pretty much every feature of the HFP30. Thank you, High Tech, for sponsoring this episode with a copy of the HFP30 and these two servos that you're seeing. They donated these two servos for the use of this video. So thank you to all my friends at High Tech. Check them out on the web, and we'll see you next time.